7.30 on your Friday morning, 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5, audio and video live, right Scott? On yes, RTC Channel 4, excellent, excellent. And of course, if you have a smartphone, an Android or an iPhone or something like that, you can download the TuneIn Radio app or a similar app. Take us wherever you're going, which of course today, to get ready for the chili cook-off tomorrow, would be to First Federal Savings Bank, where you can go inside, use the automatic teller, or whatever, and say good morning to Evan Gottschalk, president of First Federal. Evan, hi. Hey, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Hey, nice to have you in the studio this morning. Yeah, we like people to come in at the bank of and course say you hi do. to sure. us. Sure, sure you do. Yep, yeah. uh, any, any day of the week. That's why we have Saturday. a lot of parking places out there. Yeah, we do. Yeah. When, when Dick uh, put that new building in in 1976, the biggest thing he wanted to have was a huge parking lot. Ah. Because he thought that's what all the other banks were missing here on Main Street. They didn't have that. So. And he got it right. That's and right. we filled it, too. Yeah. We need more parking spots. <laughs> hey, we're getting excited about the biggest weekend in downtown Rochester. Well, i tell you what, 25th annual. That's a big number. Coming right up. Chili Cook-Off, Red Hot Car Show. And the United Way Red Hot Run also. That's right. Or tomorrow. So please come out to that. It's going to be a huge crowd like usual. Well, actually, maybe even a bigger crowd than usual this year. Good weather coming up. I think so. Good chilly eating weather, That's too. That's right. That's right. Mid-60s. Yep, mid-60s. But sun. Make it feel maybe a little bit warmer. Exactly. Lots of chili, cheese, shower cre sour cream. Yeah. Shower cream? Sure. That's yeah. not good. And uh, probably a lot of uh, auto wax, too. <laughs> but I heard we uh, maxed out on our teams for, for right. the cook-off and yeah. uh, had, to, had to annex more Main Street, I think, for more cars. That's good. That's great. Well, we've got some guests here that are going to fill us in on some of those good details. And Matt Strader and Chris Peterson. And we'll get the lowdown on everything that's going to be going on tomorrow. Excellent. Including, including what time to come out and how much money you need to bring so you can try all the different chilies. Now, I brought my four kids last year uh -huh. and uh, it was tough keeping track. Oh, I had, bad. Yeah, sure. I, I drafted a couple people to help me. So there are a lot of people here, but it's a great family atmosphere. It is. We had a great time, so we'll be back. Well, we had the big uh, bicentennial party here. Wednesday. Let's see, that's 200, isn't it? Uh, 200 it is. years 200 for the years. state of Indiana. Sure. Yeah, that, that's a unique event. But I saw there was good attendance. I wasn't able to be here. I had to. I had to be in Plymouth that day. But I talked to uh, Mason Heidi and and uh, his wife Erica helped organize that. They did. They they set it up pretty much. And, and Chelsea did, Jameson did a great from job. First Federal. They right. did a, a really really good job. The write up in the Sentinel was really positive. And uh, I think 14 torchbearers. Mm -hmm. That's a big number. It was. It was good. And uh, so you think about all the students getting to see that, that's something Matt and I never got to see when we were in school. They're doing that in all 92 counties too, which is uh, a, a nice thing for the state of Indiana to do. It uh, takes a little bit of organization. Sure does. And uh, did you get to go through the, the mobile? You know, I didn't. Uh, a lot of folks did, but I, but I didn't go through. But uh, they said it was very nice. Yeah, that's a very, good Very uh, historical, shall we say. You can see all about it on Channel 4, Tom. Okay, okay good. <laughs> Good. Scott's telling us to tune into Channel 4. We can get right. some visuals of that. That's great. Well, we thank RTC again for uh, broadcasting the show on Channel 4 again with us today. Uh, we're looking out for our friends and family down south. Uh, you, you probably have some, Tom. We've got some friends down there. I do. Got some family down there. Yep. Looking sure. at, uh, luckily, the hurricane got downgraded to a Category 3 overnight. Right. But uh, that's still, still a major a one. A lot of rain. Yep. Sure. So I don't think it's touch, touched land or anything, which is a blessing. Not yet. And they're not we'll sure. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, not sure where those things are going to go. It's weird having something in life these days with technology and everything that you just can't control. You can't. You just sit back and try your best to stay safe. So hopefully this isn't one of the record-breaking hurricanes, because I don't think they've had one in the Atlantic uh, that's been uh, this kind of strength for a long time. Right. So. Well, the, the vice president candidates finally got into the mix a little bit more this week. Tuesday night, that's right. And uh, I'm really glad the election's coming up soon. <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> 30 days from tomorrow. Evan. Let's get the votes yeah. cast and move on. 30 days from tomorrow. I think we've been talking about this for two years now. So, um, yeah, I thought they did fine, but I'm, I'm ready to 
stop the mud slinging. <laughs> okay, we've got some uh, chili related trivia this morning and then a bonus car question. Okay. So feel free to uh, think about this one. The car one, you guys are welcome to answer now. Um, when was the first official chili cook-off in the United States? In the yeah. United States? Yes. You have multiple choice, right? We do. <laughs> It'd be tough to pull that one out of the hat. Yes, it would. Counting on Matt to know that. Part of the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, Matt doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> 25 years ago. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. We invented in it. Rochester. Okay, uh, choice A is 1947. Okay. B is 1952, and C is 1967. All right. Scott always knows the answers to these, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a flip phone. Well, <laughs> he's just naturally intelligent. <laughs> I think he just went to look it up. Okay, while you're thinking about that, a um, little car trivia. Let's see if Chris knows this one. What was the average speed of the winner of the first long-distance U.S. auto race? Long distance. It was in 1911. Oh, okay. The average speed. Was yeah. that Indianapolis? It was Indianapolis. That uh, was the first average. long distance auto okay. race in the United States. All right. Average speed. Of the winner. Wow. Probably wasn't too fast. I'm guessing <laughs> 62 mile hour. Okay. Any other guesses? I'll, I'll guess 70. 50. 75. Oh, wow. That's wow. the winner on wow. that one. That's pretty good. Yeah, That's pretty good speed, don't you think? Zipping along, 1911, that's right. They hadn't had cars on the road very long know. at that point. I thought that was pretty impressive. Well, now it's like 170 or 60-something, right. I think. But, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, you guys have probably been enjoying this, too, but uh, this is the best, this is probably the second best sports time of the year. Okay. Uh, my favorite, anyway, is March Madness, but... This time of year, you get everything, some stuff ending and stuff, some right. things beginning. Right. Um, college football is finally getting a little more competitive when they get into the conference games, so that's getting fun. I know they had to move some college games or postpone them with the weather down the south. Weather. Sure. Um, some big games. But awful lot of fun with college football getting into the swing of things. And the NFL, you kind of start to see who's going to be uh, imposing their will a little bit on <laughs> offense and defense by now. Not think it, I don't think it's any of the two teams that are going to be playing here <laughs> nearby this, uh, this weekend. <laughs> you know, though, that's kind of a good test to see whether the Bears or the Colts, both at one and three, who's going to come out of that. Yeah. You know, the, the winner certainly has kind of an advantage, but the loser is really done. I think so, too. Really sad. Yeah, it'll, it'll be the death knell for one of them. And then, of course, playoff baseball, completely different from the regular season. Um, probably a good thing since there's so many regular right. season games but man the, they've had I think three four games now and and uh, three of them have been really really close games a lot of fun and since it's such a kind of a slow paced one-on-one -on -one matchup game sometimes it's just a lot of uh, a lot of drama and we saw that with the wild card games right. they didn't used to have those but they put those in so there's a little bit more yeah, one game and you can move on or you're done that's right so uh yeah, so now I got a little more trivia here to share with you, but when you look at the best regular season records in all the pro, the major sports in the U.S., uh, baseball has the smallest correlation to who wins the championship. Really? Which is yeah. not good news for my Cubs. No, it's, it's certainly not. Yeah, the NBA has the highest. So the okay. NBA team with the, the best regular season record wins the championship almost 50% of the time. So you kind of know what you're getting there to some degree. The NFL and NHL are about the same at 31%. Okay. And I heard this on ESPN. And then uh, Major League Baseball is the lowest at 19%. Hmm. So you just don't know who's going to win the playoffs. And it comes down to some teams getting kind of hot. Right. And that's some, right time. Yep, and right, and some, right. some really good individual performances sometimes. So that's awful fun. Last night... Uh, Big Poppy, he's, this is his last year in, on the Boston Red Sox. He uh, legged out a double last night, <laughs> which was awesome to see. <laughs> Made it by a hair. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've not seen that guy. I didn't know he did run anymore. They immediately <laughs> pinch run, ran for him, but that was cool to see. So the Cubs are going to be playing the Giants, and, you know, as you guys probably know, the Giants have won on the even year the last three times. So 10, 12, and 14. 
they've won the championship. And they won that one game playoff against the Mets. They did. All right. So uh, they got in kind of by the skin of their teeth anyway at the end of the season. How and, many game uh, series is that, Cubs and Giants? Five. Five. Okay. So a little different than the seven games. Right. I think a lot of times the seven game series, the best team does win. Right. But in the five game series. You never know. Yeah, there's a lot more upset. Sure. So that, that series starts tonight, so we're looking forward to that. All right, let's get into some upcoming events here in Fulton County. The Friends of the Fulton County Library book sale is today from today, that's right. 10 to 5.30. Uh, community Room A at the library, a lot of good books to be had. First Friday of the month. Uh, let's see, there's other related materials that will be sold too, but uh, you can always guarantee the proceeds are going to go for good causes at library services and programs. So come support the library if you like to read and check out the books for sale. And then also uh, the Fulton County Animal Center is getting into the fundraising mix. Uh, they're looking to build their fund to, to get their new building up for adoptable animals in Fulton County. It's a great cause. They do a lot of good work. Uh, they've been doing this amazing uh, animal spay and neuter. Yes, exactly. One day event. Right. What a what a huge, huge yes. thing. It's a, it's a great event because they're getting just dozens and dozens, hundred of an, hundred animals that go down get neutered or spayed and come back in the same day. Right. I, I can't Good even deal. imagine how that's done, but it's being done. So just a great program. I think they're doing a great job out there. They're having a porta pit chicken fundraiser tomorrow from 11 to 2 at First Federal okay. in the parking lot. So come out and support the Fulton County Animal Center um, and uh, thank them for the great job they're doing. There's a fish and chicken dinner served by the Grass Creek Lions Club. Uh, it's 4.30 to 7 tomorrow evening, and that'll be at the Grass Creek Fire Station. And uh, First Baptist Church's Fellowship Guild is hosting a Dairy Queen sponsor night. 4 p.m. Um, until closing on Wednesday, October 12th at Dairy Queen. And, of course, they'll receive then 10% of the sales that evening. Uh, to, and they're going to use the money for mission projects at First Baptist Church. Okay. Um, some other information around town. Kim Sentner and her daughter Allison Bender filled three new backpacks with food, toiletries, clothing, and more, and then they donated those to the Fulton County Veterans Service Officer Rick Fouts, who's going to distribute them to needy or homeless veterans. Just an awesome project. They're starting a fund called Warriors Light that we wanted to highlight this morning, and that's going to help needy and homeless veterans. So if you have a passion for that or you're interested in learning more about what they're doing, you should call 574-542-4202, or you can call the Veteran Service Office, and that number is 223-2217. That's a great project. Fantastic project. Yes. We need to take care of our own and appreciate what they've done for us. So flowers for those two ladies. We've got a milestone here in our community. Richard and Joyce Briggs are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary today. Hey, happy anniversary. If you see them out and about, congratulate them. And then we want to give flowers this morning to the 14 torch bearers that did such a, a great job and, and helped us really celebrate our bicentennial. You bet. Well, big money news this morning. Um, economically in the nation, there's going to be the, the last non-farm payrolls report before the Fed meets again. So. If you're interested in economics, which I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you, I'd still be interested anymore with, with the way these things are going. But if the report comes in this morning at 8:30, higher than 175,000 jobs, then uh, we're looking at a, an increased likelihood of a, a rate rise from the Federal Reserve okay. Bank, which shows that our economy is doing really quite well. So we'll see how that turns out. And then First Federal is open till five today on Fridays, every Friday, and then tomorrow we're open 8.30 to noon, uh, uh, Saturdays for us. We're closed Monday, Columbus Day, and I want to okay. make sure to highlight that a little bit. We do an annual bank-wide training um, on Columbus Day every year, so we'll be closed uh, on Monday. In case you, you pull in and you don't see any cars <laughs> in that big parking lot, you'll know why. That's why. And we'll be open again on Tuesday, just as usual. So you can bank with us anytime with our mobile app or ATM. <coughs> and use those services if you do need something on Monday. Uh, search for us on the App Store and you'll find us with our Star logo. We're home lending specialists. That's what we do and we service your loan all the way to payoff so you know who you're dealing with. Borrowers always need to meet underwriting guidelines and we can help you help discuss those if you're interested in looking at 
refinancing to a lower rate or purchasing a house. Okay. We'd love to help you. We are FDIC insured and an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is 399927. Got it all. We got it all. Okay, well, we've got uh, some guests this morning. We're excited about this weekend. We've got Chris Peterson from the Blacktop Cruisers. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. And then we've got Matt Strader from the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce. These gentlemen have been organizing our big event, and uh, we're excited to have them. So, thanks, fellas. Hey, I heard this is going to be a record event this year. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, I think both on the car side and the chili team side. So we're, um, as far as chili teams go, we got 16 uh, teams signed up this year. Uh, in the past, we've, we've been fortunate to get like maybe 10. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, we actually have some on a waiting list, which is a good problem, that's I guess. Good thing, so, yeah. Uh, Next year, we're going to try to maybe look at some other ideas to try to get some more teams involved. You know, Matt, I don't know if this had anything to do with it, but it seems to be just a good community vibe going on this year around town. And I think there's maybe a few reasons for that, but I just appreciate the different people and groups involved with talking about fresh ideas for our community and, and city and county, really, and uh, working together. But I wonder if that has something to do with some of the extra interest in being involved with this yeah, major I, event. It, it's uh, we've got a good team there at the chamber. Um, pretty excited about it and feeding on that kind of vibe, if you will. Uh, we've also got people not involved with the chamber, um, like Bill Walsh, with uh, helping with our electric and uh, Mike's trash ser Mike's trash service uh, with our totes and our dumpsters and stuff. And, and I, I mean, there's a lot of people outside of the car club and or the chamber that um, that help us out. So we. It, it, we couldn't pull it off without the community coming together, as you mentioned. City of Rochester is pretty involved in that, too. City of Rochester is great, um, helping us out. They've done a really good job this year. Uh, just the downtown area and the, the courthouse looks excellent. Uh, and on the, the car club side, we've had a record uh, sponsorship year, and we, we want to uh, make sure that all our sponsors uh, know how we feel and you know, without that, uh, we couldn't pull all this off. Uh, but why, know, why look, is that important? Well, people like uh, what we put on uh, the uh, the giveaways, the the drawings, okay. and everything. Uh, we spend a lot of money on that. Uh, we have uh, about a hundred and ten uh, trophies. Uh, you know, we have wow. individual yeah. classes, which is is kind of unheard of. It's it's what separates us from a typical car show. Uh, with that being said, it, it takes a lot of people and a lot of <laughs> it money. It does. Uh, but uh, we've we've had an outstanding uh, uh, beginning, and the everybody that's helped advertise uh, the club members. Uh, we we get all over northern Indiana and <coughs> central Indiana. And, pass out the flyers to to promote all of it and uh, everything's coming together uh, good in, including the weather I think the, I think the so. weather's always a big factor <laughs> for car shows that's, that's what I wondered our, our, it, our very own WROI that's right that, get that message hey we, so, we yes. got her we yes. got her done for you well, and I see that there's some banners along Main Street too with the, some sponsors names yes. on it so you that's, can see uh, who was involved we've we've tried to uh, Give give a little bit more for the sponsors, uh, and if you do travel Main Street, we've got uh, some new banners that uh, Scott Sager helped design. Uh, they they're they're nice looking banners. Uh, it gets the names out of, of some of our bigger. You know, unfortunately, uh, I don't think there's enough poles right. uh, downtown for everybody, but uh, we. We get our our two upper uh, level sponsors. They all get get the signs, and uh, they're you know they just add add to the the downtown attraction. I think. Chris, how many cars are you expecting to to have out here on Saturday? Uh, we could expect six hundred cars again. Uh, yeah, that's what we had last year. Uh, typically, the four hundred range is 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 our uh, plateau where you know that that's a good show uh, that's really a great show but the last couple years we've 
we've really exceeded that. Uh, we've we've taken on two more blocks to the north, and uh, the the car show participants like to have something to do. You know, they've got uh, the chili and everything going on. Yeah. But we've added a, a swap meet and kind of a car corral, uh, which includes cars for sale and it's you know kind of uh for people that don't know it's it's kind of like an automotive uh flea market uh, okay okay typically used parts but that gives the the people something to do from one o'clock or two o'clock till four o'clock uh you know they uh they can walk down walk it kind of drags them all the way down uh, downtown, you know, to the end not just the, around the, right, the the courthouse. So, uh, now, what time are all these things getting started for Chile and then cars? What what could uh, folks expect? Do they want to come out and participate and enjoy? I think the the actual cars will start rolling in a little after six o'clock. Uh, wow, you could have your coffee out here and <laughs> yeah, and here's we, some uh, loud loud cars. Seven o'clock. There will be a steady stream of okay. cars all the way up till noon. Uh, they'll they'll keep rolling in till noon. Uh, and you have a lot of volunteers helping get these things staged correctly. How does that work? That seems like a yes. We have uh, a very good volunteer base. Uh, we have uh, our club is is as large as it's ever been. Uh, we've got seventy one members, and pretty much every one of them uh, does something. Uh, whether it's cell sponsorship, uh, parking, the registration, judging, and uh, we also have different area car clubs uh, that that come in and help judge. Uh, we've got uh, like three separate teams that are one from Plymouth, one from the Peru area, and uh, another one that is is fairly local that you know they aren't actually part of our car club but we we see them throughout the year and does your club do that kind of thing for other clubs throughout the year as well so just kind yeah, of yeah yeah it's nice, kind of uh that's you a scratch nice my back, I'll yeah. scratch yours because it unfortunately it's most of your car club people are older uh and it it just takes takes a lot of people uh, to to put them on and you know we kind of work together for some of the bigger ones we help the the blueberry festival uh, with the judge team and Matt if I want to buy chili tomorrow how do I do that there's gonna be uh, ticket stands um, okay on Eighth Street here we got two of them on each end of the team so basically you're gonna buy a, like a card if you will and then you just take that to each chili, chili team and uh, like it's got a little pepper on there that they'll punch off for a sample. And, okay. And uh, that's how you, the, the more tickets you have, the more chili you can eat. What's okay. the cost for a bite of chili? They have five, a $5 card and a $10 card. Essentially, it's a dollar of uh, sample, if you will. Great. So if you want to try all 16, you're getting... We got doing well. Yeah, we got. We need a lot of water in between too. I, Your poor judges are going to be a mess. <laughs> They're going to be a mess by the time. How that's many over. judges do you have for this, Matt? Well, we have three three judges. They're they're not associated with the chamber or the teams or the car club. I mean, they're just independent. This is an independent judges. panel. That's right. That's right. Highly no scientific. graphic corruption here. No. Oh my God. No. Yeah. And I will say, there's. I mean, you get judged for the 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 people's choice are another judge. I mean, so they can turn in their their favorite chili and we'll see who wins that and then that's right they also have a deck uh, decorative contest for their boots okay. so like to see who has the best best looking boots so there'll be a lot of in interesting ideas yeah and I I'm always amazed at the varieties of chili that come out yeah I didn't grow up in a household that had very many varieties of chili and I imagine <laughs> you guys didn't either but it's kind of fun to get the whites and the reds and the spices sure. and the beef and the venison and I will, I will tell you about uh, there's a there's a captain's meeting about 8:15, so people will start cooking about 8:30. Okay. If you're around downtown about nine o'clock, this smells oh, beautiful. Oh, it's, it's great. <laughs> and then uh, they'll start serving at 11. So. Yeah. Terrific. Gasoline and chili. There you Love go. It. Nothing better. Unbeatable well, it's combination. Been, it's right? been working well for 25 years, so yes. we we know this is going to be a, a great success again. And then, uh, would you say? Chris, classic car enthusiast. You said it's kind of an older group, and mm -hmm. I, I think we all understand why probably, but it's, it seems like enthusiasm is still 
Oh, oh yeah, nationwide. It's, and and that's one thing that we we include the newer versions. Uh, our our particular club and most of your clubs are are older, but there's there's a renewed uh, interest generation uh, with interest. Uh, you know, it's just it's the newer cars, and we we include them in in our show. So you'll see uh, anything from a 1914 Model T to a, a brand new Corvette or Lamborghini, maybe. Uh, you know, we had cool. Ferraris last year. Wow! But uh, yeah, it it spans from your your common passenger car to we have a race car class. Uh, just anything uh, that the automotive enthusiast could. Uh, Want to see? We'll, we'll probably motorcycles. Get, motorcycles okay. also. Yes. Okay. Trucks and trucks, motorcycles. Sure. It's not just okay. cars, right. but trucks and and motorcycles also. I think uh, one thing you guys could do to help help uh, get the interest in that is have free test rides in that Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, we need a drag strip here just to block right. off Main right. Street. <laughs> Speaking of which, we do have. Uh, it's an altered uh, dragster. That is a nitro powered car that's wow. going to be here, and uh, towards the end of the day, we're going to get him to to fire that Ooh, up. Wow, that'd be we're cool. We're going to sell tickets for the opportunity to sit in it and actually feel the wow. the rumble of. Uh, and don't quote me, but it's it's about a ten thousand horsepower motor. Oh my goodness! That, wow. uh, and the drive shaft is taken out of the car, so people <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't need to worry. So come eat your chili. About it taking off, but it'll it'll make a lot of noise. Get your chili eating in. Go home and take a nap, uh -huh. and then we'll come back to the nitro car. Yep. That's awesome. Well, we sure appreciate you guys coming in, and then all the work that that you and your groups have put in, and will be putting in this weekend uh, for the chili cook-off and car show. And uh, we just. I've uh, been speaking with Matt Strader from the Chamber of Commerce and Chris Peterson from the Blacktop Cruisers Car Club. Thanks a lot, guys. If I could add, uh, oh yeah, you talked about fundraisers earlier, and uh, I just think it'd be appropriate because this is Dick Belcher's show that we'd like to thank him from the Optimist Club uh, for donating some land, uh, him and uh, Smith Family Farms. So we we have a pretty good fundraiser uh, for the pumpkin sales. Right. But, um, we're very very generous to have guys like him that can help us out with our. So a night street, right? It's on 6th Street. 6th Street. Well, the, the patch is on 6th Street. Right, but the the, they're on. selling them on 9th Street, right. Okay. Gourds and pumpkins of all shapes and varieties. That's right. That's right. And That's there'll right. be a U-Pick out there on uh, Saturday uh, from about 11 to 2 for all the elementary kids. Okay. So they just they can go out to the patch, and whatever they can pick, they're welcome to take. So I cool. just wanted to mention that. Sure. Thanks, Matt. Awesome. Yep. Appreciate that. Well, our trivia answer this morning, when was the first ch official chili cook-off? <laughs> 1947, 52, or 67. What do you think, Scott? Gentlemen? 52. Yeah, I'll go with the middle two. I'm going to go with A. Okay. 67. I'll take the what's left. 52 is correct. you got some veterans here of the church. Yeah, yeah. D Dino <laughs> likes that better. <veterans. laughs> this is the Texas State Fair Chili Championship, and a woman won it, which is a side note. <laughs> Our words of wisdom this morning, October is not only a beautiful month, but it marks the precious yet fleeting overlap of hockey, baseball, basketball, and football. <laughs> well said, Evan Gottschalk. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for being here. Chris, Matt, Scott, thank you for being here on the First Federal Program. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. A lot has changed since 1966, but your local banking partner, First Federal Savings Bank, hasn't. We've evolved. By combining today's technology with our timeless service to make banking more convenient and enjoyable. At First Federal, we believe in the best way forward is to continue treating customers like family. The dedicated service of our First Federal family members and the support of our wonderful communities keep us going. As I've said for 50 years, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Buying your first home? Let the experts at First Federal Savings Bank help you through the process. At First Federal, all of their mortgage loans are serviced locally with payment options that are convenient for you. Their staff will work with you answering your questions and providing professional service. First Federal will even pay standard closing costs for qualifying first-time home buyers. Just another way, First Federal takes care of you, your local mortgage lender.